Okay, so uh, we move on to a new topic. The new topic is called level curve and level set. Level curve. So a second way to visualize a function of two variable is to use a scalar field. Okay, do you remember last time we talked about uh, fxy equals to something, right? A function in terms of x and y. But now we set that particular function to be set. Okay, so uh, the scalar set is assigned to the point x, y. Let's say here, level curve showing the lines of equal pressure. For example, if I set a particular pressure to be, let's say, 1,000, uh, let me see if there is 1,000, okay, 1,008 isobar, okay, so 1,008 isobar, um, yeah, millibar, and then I see here, if there is a place such that within that particular curve, the pressure in isobar is 1,008 millibar. So I immediately found here, this circle is 1,008 millibar. This particular something like a ellipse is 1,008 millibar. This larger uh, shape, irregular shape is 1,008 millibar, etc. Okay. So what I'm trying to do is to find all position on a two-dimensional plane because uh, here is x, y, right, two variable. So within this two variable, uh, within this graph, I'm trying to find all the positions such that the pressure are equal and are equal to 1,008 millibar. Then I draw those curves. Those curves are called the level curve. So here... The second statement I put here is that a scalar field can be characterized by level curve or here in this graph in uh, ge geography, we call it contour line, along which the value is constant. So in weather map, equal pressure is called isobar. Now, the next thing is about temperature. Temperature, the level curve are called isotherms. And it's measured by, let's say, degree Celsius, uh, degree F, whatever. So all those points here, that means within this circle and this particular curve, all points are of temperature 80 degree F. Another common use of level curve is in representing uh, electric potential fields. For example, this one is a positive charge. This one is a negative charge, and then I draw a circle within this particular charge. These are the electric field, okay, so positive electric field pointing outward. Elect uh, the charge is negative, electric field pointing inward, okay. And then here, within the same circle, that means uh, there, uh, we call this to be the level curve. The level curve are known as equipotential lines or the equipotential curve. Okay, and then the next slide showing the topographic map. Contour map are commonly used to show regions on Earth's surface. Let's say, if you want to find a certain height, height let's say 4,000 kilometers above the ground, or 100 kilometers above the ground. So where is it? So you see from the map, and then here is the lost lake, here is uh, some another leg, here is the dome, and then here you see 1,800, right? Okay, so here is uh, the, the height above the ground, and here is 4094, something like that, 6600. Okay, all those are numbers representing uh, the heights above sea level in topographic map. The mountain is shown in figure one, and then we represent it, uh, the heights. For example, this point is higher than this point, right? And then this point is uh, lower than this point. So, for example, this one is 5,000, this one is 5,003, and then all the area here surrounding this place is 5,003, and then here is 5,500, something like that. Okay, so we, we try to investigate where is the exact position from the map in geography. 5003, we refer to the number 5003 here and try to see, okay, map with the geometric 
uh, characteristic, and also some of the、uh, some of the surfing guys will depend on the map in order to find the exact location, in order to rescue a certain person. Okay, so the concept of level curve can be extended by one more dimension to define level surface. Just now, in level curve, we have two input x and y, and then we have a scalar field called z, right? Z equals to f x y. Now, in level surface, we have three inputs x y z, and then we have a constant c. So f x y equals to c is the level surface of f. For example, f x y equals to c three is this、uh, inverted rice bowl. f x y c one is this large, ah,、uh, large hyperboy, right? Okay, and then this one f x y equals to c two is the conic section, is the cone, inverted cone, and also of course、uh, the bottom cone. So here is the level surface. Now, ah,、uh, the definition of level curve or level surface is as follows. The level set with constant c for a function. Let's say our input are n input x one, x two until x n, such that f x one, x two dot 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 until x n is equals to a certain parameter c. So we input m variable, and then we get back one variable c. This is the constant in real life. For n equals to two, let's say x one x two. So we input x one x two such that f x one x two equals to c. Okay. For example, if we want to have a circle, we have x square plus y square equals to c. Okay. So our function f x one x two equals to x one square plus x two square equals to a particular constant scalar field. When n equals to three. A level set is called a level surface. For example, ellipsoid, right? Okay, this one. You see, if I only underline this statement, it will be a four-dimensional space. But now, if I restrict that to be a particular constant c, then I get a surface, three-dimensional surface. So, for example, in this example I mentioned just now. F from R two to R with f x y equals to x square plus y square. We try to substitute different values of c. Then we get several level sets on the two dimensional plane. Okay, so suppose x square plus y square equals to zero. Then what do we get? This is a point. X square plus y square equals to one. What can we get? We get a unit circle. X square plus y square equals to two. So we have a circle with radius square root two. X square plus y square equals to nine. We get a circle with radius three. All of these circles are centered at origin, and depend on the selected values of c, which determines the radius. Okay. So here is the level set diagram. Now, ah,、uh, let's look at this particular. Of、uh, table for y equals to f x, we got a curve in R two because y equals to f x is a curve. But if we set f x equals to a certain parameter c, then there's a point. f x y, that is a surface. Set equals to f x y, is a surface in R three. But f x y equals to c is a curve on R two. f x y set is a four dimensional surface. But if we set a parameter like this one, ah、uh, c one, c two, c three, so what do we get? Get a quadratic surface. So quadratic surface is in R three. So if our input are n variable x one, x two until x n, so if I just consider this function, I will get an n plus one dimensional surface. But if I set it to be a particular constant c, then it will be a surface in R n. Now notice that ah、uh, here, so for example, this one is a、uh, n plus one. Di okay, dimension equals to n plus one. Then here, dimension equals to n. Okay, so the graph and the level set, the level set has 
dimension one less than the dimension of a graph, provide it the same function. So let us try to visualize it in another way. Let f be uh yeah the domain is a subset of R n which is omega maps to real. So the level set at at alpha. So suppose I set a particular line or a particular level called alpha, just like the topo to topography map. If we set the height above the sea level as five thousand kilometer, six thousand kilometer. So alpha here, okay. So alpha here is a five thousand, six thousand. So here is the level set. The level set is a set, of course. It's the set of all vector x belongs to R n. That is ah、uh, belongs to the omega, of course, such that f of x is equals to alpha. Now notice that here x is a vector, not a scalar. So because ah、uh, omega is a subset of R n, let's say it is ah、uh, R n. Okay, let's let's take it to be R n for simplicity. So we have a total n coordinates for this vector x, such that after inputting this n coordinates, and then f of this n coordinates will be equals to a certain value, height alpha. L alpha will be a subset of the domain omega, because you choose something from the domain omega, right? And then this must be ah、uh, this must be. Smaller, the sets must be must be smaller than the domain omega. So here, if you know function well, you notice that it's actually the same as taking f inverse of this particular map height level, right? Okay. So suppose let me give you an example. If you want to go hiking, and then people ask you about ah、uh, where are the surface such that The height above sea level is five thousand kilometer, so you choose alpha to be five thousand, and then you want to find the value of x. That means find the vector x belongs to omega such that f of x is equals to five thousand kilometer. So l alpha is actually the same of asking you taking the inverse of f of that particular height level. For n equals to two, of course, as I mentioned, because n equals to two, so we have input、uh, x and y and most, so those are level curve. N equals to three, we have a level surface. Okay, so from the example above, when we wish to visualize the graph of f, we often consider the vertical cross section. So, for example. If I set alpha、uh, alpha equals to alpha three, I got this blue circle or ellipse. Anyway, alpha two, I got this green part. Alpha one, if I set the height level to be alpha one within this、uh, map, I got the red curve. I project all of this red, green, and blue curve or circle or two dimensional objects to the two dimensional space. And then I get back this. Blue is the smaller one, green is the intermediate one, red is the larger one, and the whole one. If I project this particular surface onto the x y plane, I will get this guy, the pale blue surface or pale blue region. Okay, let us try to take an example. Determine the level set of f x y equals to y square minus exponential x. Ah,、uh, for all x y belongs to omega. Let us choose the omega to be r two for simplicity. So again, ah,、uh, the method is very simple. We just create this set and investigate what kind of x such that ah、uh, this x can be belongs to the set l alpha. Okay. So the first step is ah、uh, let L sub alpha because now your input is R two, so we let L sub alpha be the set of collection of all points x y belongs to R two such that y square minus exponential x is equals to a certain alpha. So alpha is the level. Remember, we rewrite the equation 
we want to find the set of xy belongs to L sub alpha if and only if this equation holds, which means that y squared is equal to exponential x plus alpha. The easy case occurs when alpha equals to zero. So suppose alpha equals to zero, so y squared is equal to exponential x. So y is equal to plus or minus square root of exponential x, plus or minus exponential x over 2. So here is the blue curve. Blue, okay, dark blue, dark blue curve. Okay, so for the case of alpha less than 0, we have this curve depending on what kind of alpha you choose. For example, alpha equals to negative 1, alpha equals to negative 2, alpha equals to negative 3, so on and so forth. Now, if you choose alpha to be greater than 0, it may be possible. So we have y squared equals to exponential x plus certain quantity, which is, non, uh, which is greater than 0. So we get that one. So you see the dark blue is only the intermediate parts of the light blue pattern and also the yellow pattern. Based on this uh, level curve, okay, this is level curve, right? Level curve. We try to get back the surface. That means, based on this light blue, dark blue, and yellow level curve, or level set, anyway, we get back the surface of graph of F. So graph of F is something like that. Okay? Now, the, fair, uh, the, the easiest way to interpret it is as follows. Whenever we give you a function, let it change this f x y to be uh, c. Okay, let me let me demonstrate. Uh, so we get this one. Okay, whenever we see f x y, we cross this out, and then what we add is a. Okay, so we add a c, change it into a constant c. So this is a level set. And then your task is to find the set of all possible x vector x belongs to omega or belongs to Rn such that y squared minus exponential x that function is equal to a certain constant c. And then you try to solve that equation and come up with the level curve for different situations. Suppose c greater than 0, c equals to 0, c less than 0. Okay, so let us try to delete all this. Okay, more example. Describe the level surface of uh, this fxy set equals to 4x squared plus y squared plus z squared. So whenever I give you a surface, whenever I give you a, a curve, something like that, even it is a dimension n, so you just has to rewrite it in the form. As I mentioned, drop this f x y z and becomes a constant c. That is the equation of level curve or level surface or level set. Therefore, from this equation we can visualize this. This is a ellipsoid. Ellipsoid. Okay, so this is the level surface. So it's uh, possible. The graph itself, okay, remember the graph itself is uh, in R4. But the level surface itself is in R3. As C increase, so C increase means the radius of the ellipsoid increase. So the radii of the circular cross section increase according to the square root of C because uh, C is equal to square root C square, right? Square root C will be the, the radius, sort of radius. So for example, uh, if C equals to 0, so we have a single point. This one is C equals to 0. This is the, the black point. C equals to 4, we get an ellipsoid. So ellipsoid. C equals to 16, we get an ellipsoid as well. This is how you draw the level surface based on a given function. The next example that I would like to draw your attention is as follows. So suppose fxy equals to, we have seen this function before, right, in the previous video. Now, fxy equals to 3 times 1 minus x over 2 minus y over 4. 
So we set it to be C. Okay, again, the same technique, same trick, no special trick. So we set it to be equals to a certain constant C. And then we choose different values of C and then inspect what will happen to this particular level set. So when C equals to zero, uh, we get X is equal to two, Y is equal to four. So we get a line segment like that. Okay. So when C is equal to one, let's say C is equal to one, we get a line segment, uh, 2.5 and, and 1.5, something like that. Okay. Anyway, so we get a line segment that is uh, in the innermost, innermost part. When C equals to three, C equals to three. Okay, so we get we basically get this this point. Okay, now uh, for this one again, f x y is equal to square root nine minus x square minus y square. So we set it to be C again. So we have x square plus y square equals to nine minus c square. As I mentioned, because this one x square plus y square should be. Uh, less than or equals to 9. So we have 0 less than or equals to c less than equals to 3. Okay, because x squared plus y squared, uh, if we assume in real space, we cannot say it is a ne negative quantity. So 9 minus c squared must be greater or equals to 0. So 0 less than or equals to c less than or equals to 3. So here, you see, when c equals to 3, we get a point because x squared plus y squared equals to 0. So we get a point circle. When c is equal to 0, so x squared plus y squared equals to 9, we get a circle with radius 3. When c is equal to 1, we get x squared plus y squared equals to 8. We get a radius circle with radius 2 root 2. So these are precisely the level curve of uh, fxy at different values of c. Okay, last but not least, let me mention about that, the bunching of the circle as c tends to 0 plus. Okay, c tends to 0 plus. So it's somewhere here over the deep, triang uh, the deep circle here, the largest circle, indicates the steepness of the hemispherical surface that means the graph of f so for drawing the graph of f you notice that the graph itself is in r3 but the level set is in r2 okay all of this guy both of this a and b pattern level curve or we call it level set in general is in r2 but the graph itself okay fxy and this fxy are all in r3 Okay, so that's what I would like you to be aware of for this chapter. Okay, if there is no problem, let us move on to the next topic in the next video.